And the theme today is how to discover, build up, and use our spiritual gifts to bring a revival. Uh, there are many people who pray for revival. Many people pray for revival, and they they think that it's waiting for God to do something before revival can come. So they just keep praying and keep waiting. But the key to revival actually has been revealed to, to us that we can have a revival to ourselves first. And then we can bring in the revival to more people. We can bring the revival for more people, uh, one by one. And then we can uh, have a revival in our church and then in our area. Um, Okay, so, um, you know, because it's God's heart. God's heart is always to help the people to uh, bring more people to in the kingdom of God and bring more people to, to love Him and uh, be motivated to serve God. You know, revival means a group of people that they are revived by God. They want to serve God. They, they want to do evangelism. They bring in more people to believe in Jesus. And they have the power of the Holy Spirit that they can uh, pray for people for healing, for, uh, for a change of spiritual life, so that they can, um, you know, they can be used by God. And you know, revival can come when we obey God and love God, when we love God, when we have a close relationship with Him when we are filled with the Holy Spirit and then we have the power of the Holy Spirit to serve God. So revival is not very hard to wait for. Some people think that, you know, we keep waiting uh, and people say, I don't know when it will come. Actually, it will come whenever people are willing. When, whenever people are willing, the work of God will be with them and then bless them and give them strength and, uh, and use them mightily. Okay, when I uh, went to the mission field, I have um, led meetings in some places and I really saw revival, that people's heart are revived, that they experience a lot of healing, uh, they lo uh, experience the power of the Holy Spirit, and every time they pray, they're motivated, they experience the joy and the love and the strength and the power of God and the revival of the spiritual life and they are willing to serve God. So that's uh, bringing in the revival when a number of people learn to build up a close relationship with God and then they experience God together. That brings the revival. Okay, so it's not so hard. So uh, not so hard in a sense because God wants a revival. God wants a revival. God wants to revive His people. God wants to revive His church. God wants to do great things in the church. So I hope that we, we all believe that it's not so far away from us. And the key to that is being filled with the Holy Spirit and carry the spiritual gifts to be used by God. Okay, now first, God gladly gives us spiritual gifts. God is happy to give us spiritual gifts. Mark 16, 15, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will, be, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So this is the will of God, that Jesus tell us to go to all the nations to preach the gospel, and, uh, and then he who believes, those who believe, these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, and they will speak with new tongues, and then they will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So it's God's will. God wants us to be carry, carrying the power of God. God wants us to have spiritual gifts that we can bless other people, that we can pray for other people to be healed, to drive out demons from them. And then when a, a, 
large number of people are zealous to do that and then they're willing to go to the street they're willing to go to the neighborhood and reach out to their friends and family then they are already having a revival so revival is not something you know that God doesn't want to give us God always wants to give us is whether the people are ready when the people are ready the revival will come when people are ready and serve God then the revival will come so here it says that we can have the for those who believe that will cast out demons in Jesus name will have signs to follow us and then lay hands on the sick and they will recover and uh, now these two signs uh, t they will take up the serpents and they will drink anything deadly and it will by no means hurt them I think they are not uh, gifts that we use ordinarily but rather they are gifts that we use when we are being persecuted that uh, that we face the danger of the serpents and then we can ask God to protect us or we were forced we are forced to drink poison and then we uh, we ask God to purify the poison and then it brings no harm to us and Jesus is victory and gladly gives us spiritual gifts he has victory over all all people over the enemy over Satan and he has all the spiritual gifts Ephesians 4 8 when he ascended on high he led cap captivity captive and gave gifts to men so when Jesus ascended on high he laid he led the uh, Satan he uh, put Satan under captive, uh, captivity he kept capture Satan and defeated Satan and then he can give spiritual gifts to men he can give all kinds of gifts different kinds of gifts to men that we can do spiritual things and it's not difficult and it's not far away from us and God has decided to give us spiritual gifts in 1st Corinthians chapter 12 verse 8 on it says God can give us the Holy Spirit can give us word of wisdom word of knowledge these are the gifts that people receive words from God that they can speak work, words of wisdom or words of knowledge that's something they don't ordinarily know but now they know by the power of the Holy Spirit they know the sickness in somebody's uh, body or the problem they're facing or the work of demons they have this word of knowledge through the same spirit and then also other people have faith here is faith in a sense that faith will bring um, healing and faith to do miracles for God and do great things for God and then gifts of healing uh, you know th many people have sickness and when we pray for people God can use us to bring healing and then work on miracles different kinds of miracles and also prophecy that we can prophesy that give us that God give us words to say uh, that uh, that is what that will come true that will come true uh, because it comes from God and then another discerning of spirits that the person can discern the spirits being present the evil spirit and to another, another different kinds of tongues speaking in tongue and interpretation of tongues so these gifts are supernatural gifts these are supernatural gifts that God wants to give us now there are more natural gifts but actually the nat more natural gifts are also supernatural the more natural gifts are like administration uh, playing music leading worship but still they are supernatural because they uh, they function with the power of God and to uh, bring changes to people's life okay and then also we first need to be filled with the Holy Spirit being filled with the Holy Spirit means having a very intimate relationship with God that we have an intimate relationship with God and turning away from sins now first is intimate relationship with God that we can experience is peace love joy and power and motivation all the time and then we uh, turn away from all sins because sins are destructive 
When we love God and obey God, then God is with us and bless us. And follow God's will and the Great Commission. The power of the Holy Spirit is for the Great Commission to bring people to, uh, to be disciples of Jesus and then teach them to obey everything Jesus has taught us. So we follow God's will uh, in every area and, uh, and follow the Great Commission uh, because the power of the Holy Spirit is not just for fun, it's not just for enjoyment, it's for bringing people into the Kingdom of God and bringing revival to people's spiritual life. And then uh, dedicating our lives to God. That a spirit-filled person means that he gives his life to God. And doing things for God's glory and not our own glory. That we do things for God's glory. That we want to glorify God. We want to serve God. We want to tell people how wonderful God is and help Christians to love God more. And then God's will is that all Christians will be filled with the Holy Spirit and receive supernatural gifts in Acts 2.17 And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out of my Spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. So it will come in the last days that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Now this is fulfilled on uh, the chap uh, in the early church, in the cha uh, second chapter of the book of Acts. So that means now we already have this uh, promise of the Holy Spirit being poured upon us. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy that, uh, that people can prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams. Now some people may say, well, I cannot prophesy. But, you know, we all receive messages from God. First, we receive the message of repentance, to repent from God and to respond to the Word of God, to obey God, to do evangelism, to help a certain person, to forgive someone, and to serve God in certain ways. All these are God's direction for us. And then when we obey this, then God will speak to us more and more and then gradually we can say the word of God uh, when we say it's from God that we are prophesying. So it's God's will that Christians can speak the word of God, to have the power of God, that we can change people and also proclaim the word of God that can apply, be applied to people. And each person has different spiritual gifts. We should work together with other Christians to build up the church. So each person uh, has different spiritual gifts. Not all people have the same gifts. 1 Corinthians 12, 11, But one and the same Spirit works in all these things, distributing to each one individually as He wills, as God wills. Now some people will say, well, according to His will, uh, what good is that? And people think that, well, God doesn't necessarily want the best for us. But this is, you know, not trusting in God. God always wants the best for us. God wants to give us the best. So uh, I hope that we all believe that. We all know that and trust that. Whenever God says, I want to do something, it is always for our good. It, that God doesn't do things for, for our harm. He wants to bless His people. It's very important to understand that. God wants to bless His people. He, God wants to use His people. God wants to do things in our lives. And different Christians have different gifts. Each person is important in God's kingdom. It, uh, Paul here compared the body to the, uh, the physical body, the human body to the uh, body of Christ, the church. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 16 and if the ear should say, because I'm not an ear, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would it be the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? Verse 21, And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. It's just like the human body that uh, because the ear is not an eye, 
it doesn't mean that the ear doesn't belong to the body. And if the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? So we need different parts of the body. And then if the, eyes ca the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, because the whole body needs each part. So we cannot say to another person, well, uh, you're no good, you, you cannot do what I can do. You know, that's not true, because God uses us differently. So we have to accept that different people can have spiritual gifts, have, have different spiritual gifts. Some people have the gift of evangelism stronger. Now, each person should do evangelism, but some people have a stronger gift of evangelism. And some people have a stronger gift of, of uh, discipleship. Some people have a stronger gift of administration, of welcome, uh, of building up the church, uh, of administration. So different people have different gifts. And then we all work together. And then we all appreciate each other. We don't compare. We don't compete. Now, the point is, each person has the different spiritual gifts. And we want to help the person to become stronger. It doesn't mean that he has that spiritual gift and that's it. Yeah, that, that's all he can have. He can have it to a larger extent. He can have it to, you know, uh, to a fuller extent that he can use it to a fuller extent. So um, in the body of Christ, if I compare to a human body, sometimes it's like the eye is not clear to see what is ahead of us. That means the person who is supposed to be the eye cannot see well. And then the mouth, which is supposed to speak the Word of God clearly, but sometimes some pastors are not speaking the Word of God clearly to encourage people. And some people, you know, should be, I mean, the hand should be working well, but the hand sometimes is not working well, then it's like the church that is not functioning well, that is not using its spiritual gifts for, to the full, ex, fullest extent, so we all have different spiritual gifts and we want to use the spiritual gifts and train and be trained in the use of the spiritual gifts and use it fully so that the whole person can grow uh, to be stronger. The body of Christ will become stronger. We should be happy if another Christian is honored. Now that's very important that, you know, sometimes we have the spirit of competition. Because in the world, there's always competition. In the world, uh, people like to compare and say, uh, I have this spiritual gifts and you don't have it. And I'm stronger than you. I have brought more people to Christ than you. My cell group is larger than yours. So some people, they like to compare. And when they compare, then it brings, uh, it causes other people to be hurt. It hurts other people. So we want to learn to appreciate each other. And and uh, thank each other and build up each other. First Corinthians twelve twenty six. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. We should be happy if a Christian is blessed by God and has strong spiritual gifts that we don't have. So if one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, then all the members rejoice. Uh, rejoice with it. So if someone is honored, someone has brought someone to Christ, we rejoice with the person. Someone's cell group grows a lot. We rejoice with the person even though our cell group doesn't grow as much. So we rejoice with other people. And then God is happy with us and God will cause uh, all the cell groups to grow and the whole church to grow. So we need to learn to not to have the spirit of competition but a spirit of appreciation. We appreciate other people serving God. I, we appreciate people having strong spiritual gifts and use the spiritual gifts to, to honor God and to serve God. Now, when we use our spiritual gifts, it's very important to have priorities. The first priority is to build up a strong relationship with God. That's the first thing. And the second is bear fruit of the Holy Spirit. That is the fruit of our life. 
that we have love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, that we have all these qualities of God. It's very important that we have a strong relationship with God. We don't have envy toward uh, of other people. We don't have anger. We don't have uh, frustration and despise of other people. But we have compassion. We have joy. We have freedom. We have strength. We have motivation. And then we want to love and bless people. When we have the fruit of the Holy Spirit, then we want to bless other people and then we'll fulfill different responsibilities our responsibilities at home first why because if the person doesn't fulfill the responsibilities at home then uh, the wife and the children are not happy and the family would be fighting against each other and then we cannot serve god wholeheartedly so we want to fulfill our responsibilities so we are blessing the family blessing the people around us so we fulfill our responsibilities in every area so that our whole life is being used by God and then when we have done this thing then we serve God in our life and in our ministry so first we have a strong relationship with God then we bear fruit of the Holy Spirit and we love and bless people be loving to people be kind to people and then fulfill our responsibilities at home, in a place of work, uh, in a church, in different area that we always treat people nicely and re fulfill our responsibilities, that we have good testimonies. And then we serve God in our life. That means in our daily life, when we are rejoicing in God, when we are encouraging other people, when we are appreciating other people, then we are already serving God because then we make people delight in God more we we then will be helping people to love God more and say God is doing a wonderful thing in his life and then we also tell people about Jesus in our daily life and then in our ministry and we can enter a ministry of the church or a ministry of our own to uh, do evangelism to build up other people's spiritual life to strengthen the church and uh, whatever we can do uh, to build up a ministry to serve God. So we, we all can uh, seek God for that. Now some people, some housewives, their ministry is training the children, loving the children and training them to love God from childhood. It's very important that the mother is not full of frustration and anger when the children disobey her because children have a tendency to be overactive. So the mother, the parents need to understand that. The children being active is not a sin. They, you know, of course disobedience is a sin, but they're active. That is the natural uh, tendency. They have a lot of energy. So we want to train them to have sports, to do exercise, to use the energy. And so that they build up the muscles so they can learn to uh, serve God, they have the strength to do th different things at home and to serve God. And so if a housewife loves the children and teach them to love God, teach them to have a good relationship with God and teach them to serve God from childhood, that they can s tell other people about Jesus Christ, even telling adults. Imagine if a child comes to you and says, oh, I, God is so wonderful. God loves you and God has blessed us and, uh, and share with you what God has done in his life. How would you feel? You would say, wow, this child is something else. He is so courageous. He shares with me about the work of Jesus. Then even a little child can be glorifying God. So as a housewife, the mother can train the children to be serving God all the time so it's our, in our daily life that we can be serving God. And then we can uh, participate in a church ministry or to build up our own church ministry with the approval of the pastor and the church. Now some people, your home is available. You can have a Bible study at your home. And if you are ready to do it, you can do it yourself or you can invite a pastor or some other leader to do it. And if you are capable of doing it and your pastor approves it, you can have a Bible study in your home and then you are doing a ministry that builds up the church. 
Now, when we use the spiritual gifts, we don't split the church. We want to build up the church. It's very important. Some people, they have a group of people and then they say, I'll build up my church uh, in my home. I don't want to go to church anymore. That's not right. Because we want to build up the church together. The church belongs to God and belongs to all Christians. You know, that we are all in one church. But we are in different locations, different churches in different locations. And if we belong to this church, we build up the church. We build up the people so that they will love the church. So, okay, so um, in our priorities in life, that we first build up a strong relationship with God, then uh, uh, bear fruit of the Holy Spirit and love and bless people and fulfill our different responsibilities and serve God in our life <clears throat> and our ministry. <clears throat>